Ahoy there fellow pirates, if you've seen my iceberg video you may remember a part where I say people who believe PvE servers should be a thing are downright wrong, and it seemed to upset a few people. This got me thinking that maybe I should actually listen to what these advocates for PvE only servers have to say. Perhaps there is a valid argument for what they want. Although it's hard to believe for some of you, some players actually enjoy purposefully doing PvE and they do it because they find it relaxing. I'm not entirely sure why they choose to do that when the App Store exists, but there we go. For me, PvP is what makes Sea of Thieves worth playing. When you're like me, and there's very little left to discover about the game, the only thing that's ever really left to surprise you is the unpredictability of encounters with other players. Without this, I think I would find the Sea of Thieves experience very bland indeed. As beautiful and surprisingly complex as the game is, it can only have so much content before the repetition begins. My point of view is not shared by everyone though. Many players who are very vocal about their opinions on torture claim that it is not fun to be constantly under threat by potentially hostile players. And I get it. Long, long ago, I felt as though all I ever did was run from Reaper Galleons with my four seafarers chests, and it was frustrating to lose it all. So PvE lovers, I will be like your lawyer and I will defend you and present your best arguments, however I will then betray you and tell you why you're probably wrong. In fact I'll be doing the latter quite a lot. Although these PvE server advocates might be a bit thick, their opinions still deserve to be heard, so I've gotten some unpaid actors to help me out. These are all word for word arguments presented by people in my YouTube comments and on Twitter. <laughs> yes, I have dragged myself through the burning hot coals of hell to make this video. I used to be against PvE servers, but quite honestly, I wouldn't be bothered if they added them. Play all you want, do what you want, just have fun. I don't know why people care if they add PvE. PvP players will have a better time fighting experienced PvP players, and the PvE players will have a good time not being constantly murdered. Players against it just like killing players, they don't really care if you're enjoying it or not. Yeah, I don't, I don't know man, I would like uh, the ability to play in a private lobby. It just, I don't, it, I don't really feel like it hurts anyone. I have, um, I have PTSD, so I try to avoid PvP games, and unfortunately there's really nothing else like Sea of Thieves out there. That I can just like play and chill with my buddies. The fact that I'm constantly paranoid that all my hard work is going to get uh, stolen, or I'm going to get in a confrontation with some sweats is just too much stress for a funny pi pirate game. Funny how I don't see anybody complaining about the people who wanted arena mode to be a thing because they were sick of PvE interrupting their PvP. Yeah, people who want a PvE mode get complained about and told, it's Sea of Thieves, it's not Sea of Friends. Like no pirate crews ever would have banded together towards one goal, which by the way, happened in Pirates of the Caribbean, which has a collaboration with Sea of Thieves, Lamau. I play video games to relax and have fun, constantly worrying about sweats that only play the game to ruin the other person's time and nothing else isn't fun to me and it sure as hell isn't relaxing. I'm not a thrill seeker, I'm not trying to prove my skills or whatever dick measuring contest PvPers enjoy having, I just want to chill out with my friends and sail the seas and have fun and make some gold, is that too much to ask? Considering the sheer amount of PvE versus PvP content and the fact they are shutting down Arena, letting all the PvP troglodytes out into the adventure mode, yes, there needs to be a PvE mode or paid private servers. I honestly don't care how it's done, but as someone who deals with reapers like honey deals with flies and gets the worst hit reg luck, I'd like to be able to enjoy the rest of the game the way I do. The feel of simply sailing. Now, I appreciate that some of you watching will be like, Oh my god, so true! Hearing all those arguments. Whereas some of you will be thinking that you've never heard something so ludicrous in your life. This is a topic that many people have very passionate opinions about, so please try and be respectful to each other in the comments. Before I finally begin addressing the points that were just made by our delightful PvE lovers, I'd like to set up some definitions. PvPers are of course people who like fighting other players in the game, but there's different types of them. What I'll be referring to as pure PvPers are PvPers who just love fighting other players. It's all they do, and they're always looking for a good fight and don't particularly care about the loot. Then we have Reaper PvPers, those who do PvP mostly for the fun of sinking people, but they also love to steal your hard work. 
They can't get enough of it. These are the most common types of PvPers. Next we have PvPVEers. These players like to do PvE, but have no problem getting into a good fight and can usually accept that sometimes they will lose an hour of work due to the number of times they've taken hours of someone else's work. Also, there's meme PvPers. These players just love to do light trolling like tucking on people's ships and saying stuff down the mic to induce major anxiety in the ship's captain. They are probably not going to steal your stuff, but they might. Finally, we have toxic PvPers. These players live to make your life a misery. They will attack new players and relentlessly and repeatedly kill them, drop all their loot off their ship, and leave it to sink. And then they'll probably mock you in an American Deep South accent. These players are not welcome and should be reported when encountered. Most players won't fit perfectly into just one of these categories. The majority will be a kind of freakish crossbreed between two or more of them. Reaper PvPers and PvPVEers probably mix together most of all. Argument 1. Arena got removed, now all the PvP sweats are an adventure! I'm going to start by addressing the removal of Arena mode from the game. I loved Arena, particularly as it allowed me to go on the game for a short session and practice my PvP skills. It's a shame it had to be removed, but it's a choice I support since it was taking a disproportional amount of work to keep functioning for the small percentage of players who actually played that mode. I often felt as though I was spending more time waiting around in the Sea Dogs Tavern than I was actually playing Arena. It had such a small player base. So logic would dictate that now Arena is shut down, all of the PvP sweats are roaming around in adventure mode sinking everyone they come across. However, not all is as it seems. Consider that people who played Arena did so for the thrill of the PvP, and are probably a lot more interested in having good fights rather than just sinking random unskilled PvE ships. From my experience, the best way to find thrilling fights is to activate the Fort of the Damned, and 80% of the time you'll be contested by Sweatlord after Sweatlord. Alternatively, Server Hop to find Reaper ships as they're most likely to be good at PvP. Ask yourself this, PvE lovers. Since the removal of Arena Mode, have you actually experienced an increase in the number of people who come up to your ship and sink it for the fun of it? I would say probably not, as the players who like stealing other people's loot and adventure are not entirely the same class of people who liked playing Arena Mode. Also consider that if only 2% of the player base was playing Arena, even if all those people moved to Adventure, that would be an incredibly minor increase in PvPers. Most Adventure Mode PvPers were already right there in Adventure. If you have noticed an increase in players stealing your loot in Adventure since the closure of Arena, then fair enough, I still have a lot more to go through. Argument 2. There's not enough PvP content in the game, so they're all fighting with PvEers. I do kind of agree with this point, the game hasn't received a proper PvP update since the implementation of the Reaper's Bones, which kind of encouraged us to attack PvE players with the implementation of the Emissary system. Since then, Arena has of course been removed, leaving not many pure PvP activities. Perhaps this will be implemented soon by Rare. I think it would be in the interests of both PvP and PvE players for there to be more updates that centre around PvP. Argument 3 why is everyone in the game so mean? The point that one of our lovely advocates for PvE servers made was that there's a toxic collection of PvP lovers who live the yeah, line It's called Sea of Thieves, not Sea of Friends and added that it's not out of the question for pirates to work together like they did in Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm not very knowledgeable about Pirates of the Caribbean. I put all my skill points into Sea of Thieves knowledge. However, it doesn't take an expert to tell you that you do have the ability to work together in Sea of Thieves using the Alliance system. Not every player in the game is out to get you. Yes, many are. But often other players are friendly. If you like PvE and form an alliance with another ship, not only are you going to make more money, you'll also be safer as you can use your alliance to fight off any PvP ships that want to sink you. A lot of PvPers will enjoy a 1v2, and if they get unimaginably angry and toxic, then that's just funny. Although sometimes I do get a little bit worried about what people who get that angry do when they leave the game. Like, I seriously pity whoever they might live with. Oh, 
<laughs> if you're on US servers, it's even easier for you to make an alliance, because the majority of the players on your servers are going to be able to speak English. On European servers, it can be quite difficult to negotiate with other players thanks to the language barrier. Right, We're friendly, join our alliance. Oh, this is going to be difficult. It is possible to form some kind of bridge of communication with other players in a situation like this by using the pirate quick chat, which will be perfectly translated for foreign players and will change based on the item you're currently holding. The best item for negotiations is the speaking trumpet, which has some useful options. How do you know if you can trust your allies though? Well, you can't always. I certainly made the mistake of being far too trusting of other players many times. I personally think it's quite scummy to deceive other players into trusting you in the game before then stealing their stuff. But hey, it's a pirate game. Of course you can't trust everyone. Just stay cautious and look for any suspicious activity, like if they're parked in such a way that gives them broadside against you. If you don't fully trust your ally, just go and do your own thing and let them do theirs. Argument 4 PvP stresses me out and I don't like it. This is fair enough, if you don't like PvP, then you don't like it. PvP can be stressful, especially when you've got no crewmate to take the edge off. I know some people just want to chill with their friends, doing voyages and relaxing. However, it is a quintessential part of the game that sometimes you will have to defend your loot from other players. I'll get more into why it's such an important aspect of the game later, but PvP is a part of Sea of Thieves and you're going to have to deal with that. There are a few ways to do so. Number one, you can voyage in the Devil's Roar. Okay, I know, I know, the Roar is an area of depression and misery on par with Birmingham, a lifeless and volcanic region of the UK. So this really isn't ideal, but if you're looking to make money and avoid PvP, it's a profitable place to be. All the ashen loot there sells for twice the price and it's so far out the way, you're not really going to run into any other players. If you do, They'll be a lot like you trying to avoid PvP, and they'll likely be willing to form an alliance. Another issue with this is that it can be hard to voyage here solo thanks to the volcanoes. If a volcano starts puffing out smoke, move your ship one map square away from the island before the eruption starts properly, and you'll be out of range of the asteroids. A telltale sign that you're in range of being hit is that there's tiny little asteroids raining down all around you, which cause no damage. Number two, constantly check the horizon. Check the horizon for ships frequently and be aware of any that are nearby. Park your ship on the opposite side of whatever island you're at, from whatever ships you might see, and keep an eye on them and where they're going. I appreciate that this method can be annoying having to constantly check the horizon, but eventually you'll be able to spot ships without using the spyglass or your crow's nest. Number 3. Make judgments based on the other crew's cosmetics. I could definitely do a whole video about this, but if they have these sails with a cut taken out the bottom, definitely stay away from them. Number four, sail with your lights off. This makes your sailing more low key. Number five, check server activity before setting sail. If you want to sail in a dead server, check all the tables on the outpost that you spawn at. The tables indicate how many ships are sailing that emissary flag with little model ships. To find a dead server, check the tables and if there's no emissaries, you're probably good to go. You'll particularly want to avoid reapers. Number six, don't fly an emissary flag yourself. Of course, this is less profitable, but if you're flying an emissary flag, ships are going to assume you've got loot and will be more likely to attack. Number seven, leave the game if you get attacked. I never really understood people who do this, but if you straight up dislike PvP, then fine, go for it. You wouldn't have given me a good fight anyway, I might as well have your loot. Just don't be angry at me, it's the price you pay for wanting to avoid PvP at all costs. Finally, if you don't mind losing your loot, but want to keep your emissary flag, you can sail through a pirate's life portal, and then cancel your tall tale, and you'll be spat out in a safe server, with all your supplies and emissary flag. Alternatively, if you're the sort of person who likes driving your loot into the Red Sea, you can do that. I'd recommend Red Seaing your loot in this corner of the map especially, as the ocean current will cause your loot to be swept further past the barrier where you get respawned back on your ship as opposed to other areas of the map where your loot will be swept by the ocean current back into the Sea of Thieves, and those pesky reapers will be able to take it all. It should also be said that PvP is supposed to be fun. I hate to say it, but if you don't enjoy it, this isn't the game for you. Here's some pleasant multiplayer games where you can chill with your friends and you don't have to be as sweaty. Minecraft. It takes two. The forest. Rounded. Human fall flat. No Man's Sky. 
I appreciate that those aren't pirate games, but I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. Argument 5. Only toxic players want PvEers in the game to bully them. Uh, this simply isn't true. If you follow the tips I've just given you, you shouldn't run into too much PvP, but it's inevitable that you will sometimes be targeted by an enemy ship. So, what should you do in this situation? Although there are a lot of toxic players in the game, who do just want to make your life harder, many PvPers can be quite nice and may be willing to negotiate, if you have a good enough sob story. Once I got sunk by a ship that let me keep my gold hoarder's key. Oh, sorry man. Reaper's got a reap. You can take our robot if you have one. For your key, and you can do your work. There's always something to potentially salvage. If you're just a dick, they aren't going to take any pity on you at all. Obviously, some players are going to fight you and try and sink you and take everything no matter what. In a situation like this, the best thing to do is give up. On your pathetic lifestyle of running from every fight, don't let them take your stuff to fend it with your life. Why? Because it must be done. Because you put in the work and earned it. Because if you can't stand up to the Reaper's bones, who will? Defy their tyranny, do not sink to the bottom of the sea in anguish, live on! If there's even a million to one chance you can keep your hard-earned loot, take it! There will come a day when you will be sunk and all hope will be lost, but it will not be this day. Today you fight! Victory! Victory! Ugh, but how, oh how do I do that, I hear you ask. This probably isn't the right video for that, but I'll do my best. Fight unconventionally. Keep an eye out for borders, keep an ear out for audio cues. I recommend the following strategy. Bring a keg on board for defensive measures. They say never keep a keg on your ship, but it can be useful if you don't want to fight conventionally. Keep them below deck where they won't get sniped. It sounds completely illogical, but the only way they can be set off here is either by a blunderbomb or a player who runs below your deck. So keep a distance, don't get snuck up on, and then lure them into a chase before kegging them. They aren't going to sink from one keg, so you must turn around as soon as the damage is dealt, and make sure they definitely sink. One regular keg is not going to be good enough to sink any player who knows what they're doing, and most experienced players will also be able to survive a stronghold keg, and recover reasonably quickly from it. Whoever does the kegging should hold onto the keg for dear life, as more skilled crews will be able to defuse it. Even if you use a stronghold keg, you must turn your ship around to ensure they sink. The fastest way to turn around was with an anchor turn. I recently stronghold kegged a ship, wiping its whole crew, and I thought they'd be done for. But upon respawning, I discovered that they had somehow survived and I was unable to sink them. So you do need a crewmate for this strategy to man your ship. If you do manage to sink them, find somewhere to hide your ship until you're absolutely sure they're not coming back. Coming up against other players is meant to be exciting, so enjoy it, strategize, and embrace it. Find a way to outsmart them. Interlude. PvP etiquette. I'm very much a PvP enjoyer as I've said, but I do also like PvE. I could dedicate a session to one or the other, or sometimes both. People are free to play the game however they want, as long as it's not incredibly toxic, but I have devised a bit of a set of rules that I follow to stop myself from being a complete asshole. And I think it's a set of generally unspoken rules, which are followed by a lot of people, and it's frowned upon when players don't follow them. My first rule is that I should always judge a ship on whether it's worthy of being sunk. If I engage a ship that barely has any loot and wants to stick to itself, I'll usually leave it be although I may be back later. I will generally only sink a ship if it was aggressive towards me first, or if the ship has desirable loot such as fort loot, manifests, chest of ancient tributes, Athena goods, or a high grade emissary flag. The final requirement would be for the ship to be full of horrible people, like if I hear them using a homophobic or racial slur, I'll be doing my best to give them a bad time. Attacking someone and then leaving them alone to stay afloat is generally referred to as a catch and release. My second rule is that I almost always fight people to take their loot, not just to be a dick. Recently, I had some guy kill my friend and I repeatedly, and didn't even try to sink our ship or sell our loot, despite us being in the prime selling position at Reaper's Hideout. He started dropping all our loot off our ship to make it sink, and to make matters worse, the servers were shutting down in a few minutes. The only reason he lived as long as he did was because I wanted him to sell our gifts. Once he was dead, all he had to say was GG's. No. Just because you said GG does not mean you have good PvP etiquette. We did manage to sell our loot luckily with 3 minutes to spare before servers were closed. My third rule is that I don't get overly angry when someone kills me. No, I'm not happy that you killed me in one shot with a blunderbuss, and I'm not happy that you shot me with a sniper and then again immediately with a pistol the second I spawned in, but I will be learning what I need to do to avoid that happening again. 
And don't you complain when I kill you with a sword. It does require skill, thank you very much. Oh, but it's so OP. If sword is so OP, why don't you use one? There is honor amongst thieves in Sea of Thieves, but not everyone will respect that, and it sucks. But this brings me on to the next argument. Argument six. It's not fair. No, it's not. Sometimes you will face overwhelming odds and you will sink. That is the nature of the game. You'll have to deal with it. Everyone who has stunk you and taken hours of your work has had the same done to them at some point. You will get unlucky and you'll get lucky. Just like life. Argument seven. It wouldn't hurt anyone. Many would argue that it wouldn't hurt anyone to have PvE servers in the game. Why shouldn't they be able to have their PvE's fun separate from the PvP players? Seems like a fair point at a first glance. Although PvP lovers seem to mock the PvEers, saying things like, Oh, it's Sea of Thieves, not Sea of Friends. What many people fail to mention is that it's PvE that allows PvP to exist. Without any reason to sink people, the game loses its stakes. There should be a reward for being skilled at PvP just like there is a reward for doing a skeleton fort or a dig quest. Often I'll have sunk a ship and been told to do the work yourself rather than taking it from other people. Uh, I have done it. I've done it many times, but look, I need the commendation for delivering stolen merchant commodities, so how about you just accept that sometimes you'll lose and move on. If you didn't want the reaper that had been roaming around the map for an hour to attack you, you probably should have switched server. So thank you PvEers, for giving all the PvPers a reason to fight. We appreciate it. And I'm sorry that you've had your work taken off you, but that's the game. If you don't enjoy doing the quests, then why are you playing? Is it the gold? If you do want gold, you're gonna have to get better at PvP, or pay the price of avoiding it altogether. That's the game, it's not always fair. It can certainly be frustrating, but it's a thrill. Oh no, fuck, fuck, oh for fuck's sake. I hate everything about my life. Argument 8. The marketing. Okay, this wasn't a point made by any of the PvE people I showed at the start. However, Blubs recently released a video about the game's marketing and how it's not entirely accurately representing the game. Watch the video for yourself, but in a nutshell, with the way the game is marketed, it's no wonder that many new players go in expecting a light-hearted, friendly pirate adventure game. Aesthetically, the game doesn't look like a hardcore PvP game, and at a surface level, it's not. It's a PvE game involving PvP. A sandbox where you're supposed to play the way you want to, but are forced to share with other people. Argument 9. They should add PvE servers without any progression. This sounds like it would make sense, and it would allow people to play in peace and do their own things. It would certainly help smaller content creators gather footage for videos. I can't say I see the appeal personally, but I could support this approach. My main question is, would it actually be possible? You've played Sea of Thieves, you know how unstable the game's servers can be at times. I'm not a game developer, so I'm only speculating here. But I imagine having so many crews be able to create their own private servers would be very strenuous on the game's servers. The game already has private servers for the fancy pants Sea of Thieves partners, and were it possible to make these available for everyone, I think Rare would have already done it. Although, it is said that they are working on it. For those of you who want PvE servers with progression, I'm afraid that's never going to happen. Protecting your loot from other crews is a required skill for thriving in the game, and you'll be rewarded for it. One more thing to consider is that if PvE players are playing in their own private session with reduced progression, the PvEers who are still in the main PvP mode will no longer have the protection of other PvE ships that prevent PvP ships from loading into their game. You need each other. There would be a tenth argument, but I've run out of things to talk about, which, as it turns out, is an important element of script writing. Time for the conclusion, I guess. So, do I think that PvE servers should be implemented in any form? No, of course I don't. What do you think I am? A fucking idiot? Well, thank you very much for listening. I'm sure many of you have been writing angry comments throughout calling me biased towards PvP or something pathetic like a soy boy for taking the time to share arguments that you personally disagree with. I never claimed to be unbiased. I suppose what I really want people to understand is that it's impossible to please everyone. I can say with quite a bit of certainty that the majority of players do not want PvE servers. But in the spirit of democracy, we're all entitled to have and express our own opinions, no matter how ridiculous they may be. When it comes to the media, there seems to be this overwhelming idea of both-sidesism, which usually ends up playing into the hands of the right wing, 
whose media dominates the press, brainwashing our population into believing that the billionaire elite somehow deserve the mass amounts of wealth they've built up. Honestly, those people have an unimaginably huge level of wealth. Or while just 1% of what they have would be an absolutely life-changing amount of money to someone else. Sorry, I think I got a bit off topic there. The point is, one side is trying to brainwash you for their own personal gain, the other side actually cares about the needs of the many. I can only hope that this video has been at least thought-provoking for some of you, and maybe some of your opinions have been swayed. As long as you've been entertained, that's the most important thing to me. Here's a little extra things for the fans of the channel, and if you're not one of my subscribers you should totally do that please. Unfortunately, you're not going to be seeing any big scripted uploads from me in the next 8 months or so, as I'm now in my final year of university and I need to concentrate on that, since I need to make an income and not be a burden to the taxpayer for the rest of my life. Yes, I can make an income off YouTube, but it's unfortunately not reliable. We will meet again though, I promise you all that. Until then, safe voyages everyone.